everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really nice, rather large size gift box. It's all reinforced, it's got a flip lid, you can see inside there. Some of you, if you've been following me for a long time, you'll recognise this bow. It's a slightly smaller version of my big bow. That's what I call it, my big bow topper. I made this, oh, I probably want to say about two years ago, I reckon. And what I'm going to do, because I won't be showing you how to make this, because I've already done it. <laughs> I'm just going to link you to that one there. So if you click on that one, it will show you how I made this bow. I will give the measurements for this one and the quantities, because obviously it's a little bit smaller. But also the box that I put this on in that video is another nice, it's a six by six, I think that one was, and it's really lovely. But um, yeah, I thought I'd show you this one. It actually reminds me a little bit of like a carriage clock. It's got that kind of look about it. So you could maybe cut a, a little aperture window here, put some acetate behind it. So it's really, really fun. Like I said, all reinforced. And um, yeah, let's crack on and I'll show you how to make it. Okay, so there is the bow for today's. All right, so that one's all done. Again, like I said, I'll list everything below and I'll give you the measurements to that topper later on. Now, I've done one base because you do two of these. So this is one already done. And um, I'm going for this blue today because the papers I'm using are from the new Paper Addicts Magical Stories. So this is a Christmas paper pack. However, you know, there's so many patterns here that you don't have to just use for Christmas. I mean, with this one here, if you just remove that, it will make a lovely box for a birthday. So, uh, you know, that I did say that as well when I done the unboxing that, you know, you can use these papers, that a lot of the reverse size sides as well. So that's the paper pad. I will link all of that below, but the one I've pulled out is this one here with the Christmas baubles on and it's got this nice kind of just very light blue colour and I just thought this card worked really quite well with it. So, so you're going to need, I'm going to go through all those measurements in a moment. So it's a deconstructed box. I've made this side, this style box before and I've done it for the teacup and saucer. It's that one with like the hinges. That's how we're going with this one today. So for the base and the lid you want two pieces that are eight by nine and a half and on all four sides you're going to score at one and two inches. Okay, rotate one and two, rotate one and two, and again one and two. So these are both reinforced. So you want to do that on both pieces. So you'll have two. Like I said, I've already done this one, and I'll show you how to do that one in a moment. Then for your sides, so what I've done is I've reinforced these by sticking them to the, the blue card stock. So this is actually a strong, I would say it's it's borderline paper and card. It's a really good quality. So it works great on its own. And it would also work as a, you know, a card blank. You could have that, you know, as the front of a card and then do your mats and layers and so on. But because the way I'm doing this box and because this is reinforced, I've decided to stick these on another piece of card stock and I'm using the Kalal glue because this just dries completely you know stiff so it just creates more of a chipboard feel to your projects so it's entirely up to you if you do that your card stock your pattern card that you're using might be even thicker than mine and you might not be using pattern you might be using a colored you know just plain card stock and in that case i'd recommend like a 300 350 gsm you wouldn't need to do this but if you do then you're going to need two pieces of pattern paper that are three and three quarters by eight and then two pieces of a coloured card you know mine's all matching so it's just the same card from this it's actually the little card stock if anybody's wondering and you want them the same size and just stick them together you can hear there they're just solid pieces now much much stronger than that on its own then you also want two pieces so this is five and three eighths by eight inches and you want two pieces of coloured and two pieces of pattern. So I'm just going to show you because I'm going to stick this one over the top. Now I did do this longer, you don't need to ignore that I folded that over, it really you don't need to do that at all. I was just trying something else out at that point but I'm going to stick them together in a moment. Then for your hinges you want four pieces that are three quarters of an inch by eight and then along the three quarters of an inch, you want to score it three eighths of an inch right down through the middle and just fold and burnish those. You might want to do thicker, you might want to do two by eight and then score at one inch, or you might want to do one inch by eight and score at half an inch, it depends. I just wanted it quite thin, my kind of hinge. So again, those of you that have made these, because I know so many of you have made like loads of the teacup and saucer box, then you know, yeah. You, you know what you're doing. Then you'll need four pieces of three quarters of an inch 
by five and a quarter. That's the mirrored cardstock, so four pieces. And then four pieces of, I think I just dropped this down, yeah, half an inch by five. Okay, and then again, you'll want four inches of three quarters of an inch by three and three quarters. And you'll want four again of half an inch by three and a half inches. And these are to decorate the bottom here. So that's completely optional. And I've also done it on foam. So the blue is raised. So I've stuck them all down. You'll see that I've got my foam in between. So I've got all those ready to go as well. And then for the topper, the mirrored cardstock is three and three quarters by eight by five and a quarter. So the white piece on top will be three and a half by five. Okay, so that's all of my sides already. So then we'll do this. So you'll have two pieces. Now you will end up cutting one of them slightly different, but I'm gonna show you both ways on this one. So first of all, just fold and burnish all of those score lines. Okay, and then we just need to do a bit of cutting. So along the shorter side, you will have four squares here. You want to cut down past the first score line and down to the second. So there's your first down to the second. And again, do the same with that one. Okay, so there's still those four squares. These two outer ones you want to remove completely. And then that one as well. So then all you're left with is just this one, which is going to create a tab. So do that on all four corners. Okay, so this is what you should now have and all of these ones should all be free apart from one side. And then we just want to go and take little wedges off of all of the sides of everything, okay? So off of there, just kind of mitering it all. This one here, every edge that you have apart from these actual outer side pieces, just all of, the, all of these bits here. Okay, so you're going to do this the same for every single one, but because this one now is going to become the lid, I am going to do this one slightly different. So what I want to do first of all is show you how you will glue all of it down for the base. Okay, so some glue on one of the tabs. And then just bring one side right the way up like this. Okay, and then at the other end of the long side, because I'm doing the long side here, you're again going to pop, you will end up putting glue on all four. Okay, so if you're doing this as your base, you'll, you will stick all four of the corners in like this. So this one, this one as well. But I don't want to do those ones because this is going to be the lid. I've already done the base. So you see there how it's going to look. Okay, then... If you imagine I've already stuck these in, you're now going to fold in all of those sides with glue and you would do that on that one as well and that will give you this, okay? But because this is, like I said, going to be the lid, the difference you need to do with this, so although the scoring's all the same and we cut it to that point, you then want to cut away. So what we want to do here is just cut away this completely. And this one here. and then cut all the way down this one here. Okay, so then all you're left with is that hinge. These pieces then, you'll just stick in as normal. All right. Just get your bone fold and just go in, really burnish that side and just make sure that glue is spread out. And you'll do this whether you're doing the lid or the base, it's all exactly the same. The only difference is you're cutting that piece away on the long side on one of them. All right. Okay, so you'll have one that has all folded in and then you'll have one that has this piece just flapping out over the side. Okay, so now you want your hinges and one of your front pieces. So you'll have your front and back of the bigger ones and then these two are your side pieces. And we're just gonna start putting them all together. So you're gonna have a piece of the hinge stuck on the front like that, just half of it, like so. Okay, so it's up to you whether you want to add the glue in there first or on here. I'm actually going to add a very thin bead onto here. 
and then you can just kind of fold this over like and just kind of push down it both sides because the glue is only actually going to stick to one side but it just means that you can really stick it into place then. Okay so there's now one of my hinges on so I'm going to do the same on this side. Okay and do the same with the other large piece. Okay, so I've got my two front and back pieces there and then you want to grab your sides and grab any of them and you're now going to stick one of the sides on. So again, I prefer to put my glue onto this piece and obviously make sure you've got your directional paper if you are using it up the right way and again just go around sticking it all down. Okay, and then you want to attach this onto there. So again, I'm still going to stick my glue on here. Okay, so that's that piece. Now while that's still just drying a little bit, I'm going to stick these on the side of this piece. They're still going on all four sides, even though that bit's slightly disconnected. So I'm just going to stick all them down. Okay, so I've stuck my topper on as well, so that's my whole lid all ready to go with the hinge there at the back. And then this here, the easiest way to do it is if you push in the sides, push everything in, and then you'll get it into the lid, or sorry, the base, like so. And then once you stick everything down, it should all fold completely flush, which it does. Okay, so what I do again is I put my glue, this is, liquid glue is going to be better for this project because it gives you that time to move things. So I'm just going to cover about an inch because that's the depth of the, the base. And I do have time with this glue as well. So again, I'm just going to squeeze it all in. Get all your points in and then it will just push itself out. Pop it on its side and you can go around, get your hand in and really push down. Make sure you're pushing it right to the base there, okay? So you keep everything straight. And there you go, a really lovely, very, very strong. This, this really is a super strong box. And if you want to reinforce it even more, you could add another, you know, you could add some chipboard on that base there as well if you wanted to. But it, this is going to hold, you know, hold a, definitely a bottle of something. So um, yeah, it's very, very strong. And then all you've got to do is pop your lid on. So what's going to happen is that's going to go over the front and then this back bit is going to stick onto the back of this. So that then when you lift it up, You've got the hinge okay so again I'm just going to pop some glue in here decide if you've got a preference to the front or back my designs are pretty straightforward and if you put it on at the front first push it then right back and then bring that down just hold it there for a second and once it starts to tack then you can lift it up and just make sure it's all but that way you know your lid's on perfectly, whereas if you go to put it on lying it down, lifting it up slightly, you might not get it in place, but you can see already now everything's nice and flush. And um, yeah, it's a really special box. I like this one a lot. Okay, so there you have it. A really lovely, very, very strong, nice sized gift box. I didn't actually give the overall dimensions for this one at the beginning, but it will end up being five and a half by eight by three and three quarters so it's a, it's a great size I love them I love that they're not your traditional Christmas which for me is a little bit of a a, a newish thing because I tend to always stick with my greens and reds but I'm enjoying playing with these papers um, I need to put a top on there actually I'll do that nearer the time but you can see what I've done there that was just using a one of the papers in the same pack. What you can also do is if you want to have it as a closure then there's no reason why you can't, I've got some scrap card here, you could stick a piece of cardstock underneath there then put a nice topper on here like a circle something that says Merry Christmas and then put some velcro underneath here or a magnetic closure and then it would close and it would keep the lid 
if you want to do it that way. You guys, you always amaze me with what you share over on the Facebook group, so um, I'm sure some of you will come up with something. You can also turn it into a gift bag. There's no reason why you can't put hole punches here and have a handle on it. I think that would look really, really nice as well. Put some feet on it, you know, make it look like an actual clock. There's just so many ideas with this, but it's just a lovely size box. So I hope I've given you lots of inspiration. Hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, if you have, please give me a thumbs up. I do really appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel so you get to see more, because I've got so many great things coming. So yeah, until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.